Hello, and welcome to Lucy's Big Beautiful World of Painting. I'm happy to be here today, and I have a special instruction um, for you for a very, um, for the very new painter, a painter that maybe has never picked up a brush before, or for a beginner. Um, it's kind of a little project painting, and what I've done so far is I have put on some blue tape and this is a painter's tape that you can buy in any store and um, today I'm using blue I usually don't I usually use masking tape but I want to make sure that it translates to the camera so what I have done is I have taped on the corners going across uh, in across and I've tore off these edges what I'm going to do is put a curtain here we're gonna have a, a night sky with some water and uh, maybe some trees coming off the side, depending on time. Um, we'll peel the tape off, and the tape is going to, under the tape will represent the windowsill itself. So um, it's kind of a little, uh, a little crafty painting. And uh, I put a dot here, which is just a, a simple uh, sticker that you can get, um, even in a dollar store. And I put the dot here, so then it will make it easier for us to paint in our moon and we're gonna put some moon glow on, okay? So, uh, today I am using um, Wilson Bickford products. He's a wonderful artist up in the uh, Adirondack Mountains in New York, and I am uh, happy to be certified by him to teach his methods. I also teach my own methods. And um, let's just get started, okay? I have already put on some a liquid white, which is a, um, a wonderful product. It's a, a fast flow white, and it lubricates the uh, canvas. So I just went around and put some on the canvas, rubbed it in. I, I put very, very little over on the side of where the curtain is going to be. So I want that nice dark red curtain. So again, I'm going to start a night sky, okay? So for my colors today, it's a very limited palette. I'll be using titanium white, ivory black, ultramarine blue, cadmium red light, cadmium red deep, and for the window panes, uh, some yellow ochre. And I'm going to show you a floating process of how I load a flat brush to um, just have the edges come out with the yellow ochre. So my advice to you is to watch the show, then gather your supplies, and that'll make it much easier and you'll know which way you're going with the painting. So for now, I'm taking my brush, which had a little bit of that um, white base, and I'm adding some nice ultramarine blue. Gonna add in a little bit of dark. We want a night sky, and a little bit of the cad red. So that might turn it a little tiny bit purple, and we do want it nice and dark. And I could always adjust the color as I go along very easily by adding more white. So I'm just tapping it in into the bristles, okay? And here we go. Just going to rub on this paint. It's going to pick up a little bit of that white from the back. It looks like my white dried a little, so I may have some brush strokes in there, some more lines. And that's okay. We can always use a mop brush. So what I'm doing is using a one-inch scenery brush. And this is um, from the Wilson Bickford product line. And I'm using X strokes just to fill in those teeth of the canvas. This is a wrapped canvas, and you can do this on any size canvas or a, a flat panel canvas, a piece of wood, anything that you'd want to use. Just the idea of getting that tape on. And you can use a ruler. I didn't today. I just kind of put that tape on. And we have a nice sky already showing. I put that sticker there. And I'm leaving a little bit around it for now. Now, as I get down to the bottom of my horizon, which the horizon will be under this line, I'm going to make it just a little bit lighter. And I'll come in and I'll, I'll, make, a, I'll make a horizon line under that sill. So this will be the sky, and this bottom will be a little bit of water. So it'll look as if you're looking out a window, maybe in a, a high up hotel room and looking down at the water and out at the sky. So here we go. We have some nice blue in that sky. I'm just going to gently go across. I don't want to bring too much blue over. 
Okay, so what I'd like to do now is I'm taking a mop brush, which is a nice soft feather brush. It's not a feather, but it feels like a feather. It's just very soft. And I'm mopping out some of these brush strokes and softening up that sky a little bit. And you can see it actually makes it look like the paint is a little darker. So I'm very gently going across in X's again and smoothing out the lines. Now, since it's a sky and it's water, it's okay if there's lines in there, so I don't have to take too much time doing that. Now, this painting at home should take you about an hour and a half to complete. I'm going to complete it here today in about 28 minutes. So um, you can stop and start, of course, and that will help you to um, have your painting come out neat. So today, I'm not too worried if it doesn't come out so neat. What I want is for you to learn the lesson on how to do it. Now going to be using my signature brush called the bounce brush and um, it has indentations on the handle and the three rows of horse hair so what I'd like to do is I'm just going to bounce some white paint on on the tip of my brush about a quarter of an inch or so and I may have to put a little more I'd like to come in and put a moon glow so I'm just going to come in a circle here now I'm using the tip right now and then what I'm going to do is take the whole brush and gonna spread this out in a circle. And I have to turn my end a little. I hope I'm not covering it. And I wanna make a nice moon glow around that moon. And I'll come back again to the mop brush and soften that out. And there we go, we have a moon glow. Okay, so now that we have the moon glow, we can paint in our moon. Going to just peel off my little sticker that I had here. And there you go, you have a bright moon. I'm taking a small flat brush, coming in some titanium white, maybe a dab of the yellow ochre. You can hardly see that, so the yellow ochre may show a little, a little better if I add a little bit more here. I've hardly got any, let's see. There we go. Now, what I'll do is I'm going to hold the brush on the chisel edge, and when I flatten the brush out, this edge here is called the chisel edge. I'm just going to put my pinky on the canvas for um, an anchor just to hold it so I have a little support there, and I'm going to just move the brush and push it down and paint in a half circle and then a circle again. I'm not sure if I covered that up, I'll do it again. I'm just pushing down in a circle and a circle. And there we go, there we have our moon. I can add more of a moon glow if I'd like to. I don't necessarily have to. I think that it might just need a little bit more darkness up top, but just for the sake of uh, showing you how to do it, I think that's pretty good. Now I'd like to do something that's, that's fun. I'm going to take a clean bounce brush and going to rub it into some of my fast flow white and it might not be enough so I'm going to come over and just rubbing the brush and bouncing it into some titanium white. Now I'm going to need a little bit of thinner. I need my paint thin so I'm just dipping in my bucket and getting a little bit of the thinner and I'm thinning out my paint. I'm going to add stars to the sky, and to add the stars to the sky, I need the paint a little bit thin. Okay, I'm going to put down my palette for this. I'm gonna cover my bucket up. Every time that you have turpenoid or any kind of odorless uh, turpentine, it's always good to keep it covered. It does have a little bit of a smell, even though they say it's uh, odorless. Now, I'm taking my brush up about three or four inches away. I'm going to do it a little bit on the side to make sure that you can see it. And I'm just going to flick some of the paint, I'm coming out on the side, and here we go. This is going to represent, it's a little sloppy, going to represent some stars in the sky area. Now, you can see a couple of them kind of opened up, and I'm going to show you another little trick today. I have a pin here. What I'd like to do is where I see some of the paint splatters, what I'm doing is I can take the little pin and I'm going to try to anchor my finger 
and you can just pull them out. Now, this probably is not showing and I may not have enough paint, but just to show you how to do it, what I'm doing with the pin is that's how you can make shooting stars. So if you have a part where there's a big droplet, you can pull it out and you would make some shooting stars, okay? So my droplets came out small, so I don't think I can actually see any, but I just want to give you the idea of how to do it. When you have a bigger droplet, you just take your pin and you pull some out there. You might be able to, I don't know if you can get close enough to look at that there, and, and you make some shooting stars in the sky. So this maybe <laughs> may look more like a comet, but we're gonna leave it just for the sake of time. What I'd like to do now is, I'd like to establish a little bit of a horizon line. So I'm just gonna take my blue paint a little darker here, just so I can see where the sky uh, is ending and where my water would be beginning. So I'm gonna take it a little darker. I'm just loading the brush. This is a large flat brush. And I'm not gonna worry if the horizon is not too straight. It should be straight. You could actually put another piece of tape across uh, when you do it at home and um, you can put a level on it or you can use a T-square to make sure it's straight. Okay, in this case, I'm just going to paint across. And I like the way this brush is looking, painting across. So coming over, getting more blue, getting a little black. Maybe I'll add a little bit of white and change that up a little bit. Maybe a little red. See if we get a little, a little purpley color. That blue is real strong, it's taking over. I'm getting a little bit of a purple color. Let's see how we got more of a blackish color, it looks like. So I may come back and add a little more red. So I'm just fussing a little bit with the paint. You see I have a little hair in there. I can always pick that out with the corner of the brush and wipe that on a paper towel. So I just wanna have a little bit of a different color. At home, you'll mix your colors and you'll get exactly the color that you like the best. Oh, look, I got some red in there. Now, of course, there's no red in the sky, but just for the sake of the lesson, <laughs> I'm not gonna worry too much about the color. I'll go back and I'll put some more blue in there and some more white and let's, let's make that. the lines. And water does have lines. I can always go back in with the mop brush and soften them. Now I'm just going painting right into my ultramarine blue. I'm gonna make this bottom darker. So it just looks a little closer. There we go. And I'm gonna scrub some of that paint in. I was using quite a bit of paint there. And sometimes the paint goes underneath the tape a little, and that's okay. We have a wipe off tool that we can use to scrape that off. Okay, here we go. So we have some water here. I'm gonna make this bottom a little bit darker in here. It will look like a reflection, and I'm going to put some water lines underneath that moon just to show the reflection from that moon. So, I'm going to go to my palette knife, taking some nice, fresh, white paint, and I'm smoothing it out, making it very, very thin. Now, this is the same way that we had snow on mountains, um, and anything, uh, water lines that we'd like to use, this is the same procedure. We use a palette knife. This happens to be a small palette knife. There's all sizes. I'm just wiping it off because I want to show you I'm cutting a bead of paint. There we go. Now you might be able to hopefully see that. I put a little more on than I usually would and hope, hoping that you can see it. There is my bead of paint. Now, here is my moon. So right under here, I'm going to start to lay on some of this paint. And it's gonna look like some nice glistening in the water. I'm gonna come back again once I see no paint is coming off the knife and putting more. Now, you see I slipped a little there, but that's okay. It'll look like a white cap in the water. I'm going to concentrate some of these um, little wavelets a little higher and then I can make them um, more far apart as we come down. So this way it looks like 
the moon has the brightness up on top of the water and then it fades out a little as we come to the bottom. Now ideally they should be straight across but I'm painting on a little bit of an angle. So when you do this at home, try your best to hold the knife so it comes a little straight across and you can see I'm holding it and I'm putting quite a bit of pressure on it and pushing but just that bead of paint. If you see that the paint is not coming off the knife then you'll hold it a little bit flatter until it does come off. Now these lines should be different sizes, different lengths. You don't want them to all be the same. Like I said I concentrated it a little bit up here to show that it's brighter up top. Okay. Now, I have a, a curtain. I don't have a curtain. <laughs> I mean, I'm putting a curtain in, okay? And then what I probably should have done was pulled my water over, but I can always do that after. So for the sake of time, I wanted to make sure I at least got in um, a certain amount of this painting before we get to the, the real fun part, which is the window pane, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm switching over to a clean uh, flat brush and right in here, I'm gonna start putting in the curtain. Now I want this curtain to be a deep red and I, I'll put some, um, maybe some black in it and a lighter red just for variation. So I'm coming in, with this nice red. And you can see where I tore off the tape. So I'm just going to paint in a curtain. Now with the wrapped canvas you can always go back and paint the sides of the canvas for time. Today I'm not going to do that but usually I would especially if I was going to be giving this painting as a gift. I would come in and I would paint those sides nice and neat and this way it just um, the canvas just hangs right on the wall on even um, a very small um, a thumbtack even. It doesn't even have to be a nail. So I'm just painting some red in along the edge and this is the darker, the darker red. You can see I got a little, a little of a, a black color that was in there from before and that's fine. And I'm, I could use a bigger brush but I like the idea of going back and forth to give a little movement to the curtain. Because you can see how I'm pushing either on the chisel edge or on the flat of the brush. Now I'll go into a little bit of the lighter color and we'll see how that looks. This way it kind of looks like a little light and dark in the curtain. Even though um, this is kind of a, a more of an, art, an artsy painting, I should say, because we are doing this little, uh, this little trick with the tape. It's still, still nice to get darks and lights. So now I went back in again to the darker color and I'm just painting in. I'm pushing the brush pretty hard right now to make sure that I get this paint into the little grooves. Okay, going back into the dark using quite a bit of paint, but I'm going to spread it out. There we go. I'm just blending a little in between the dark and light, which you may not be able to see. Going back into the, the cad, cadmium red light there, which is almost an orange color. So the orange and the red go very well together. And then I'll just kind of neaten up here and go back in the same angle that I'm going, which is up and down and kind of following the way this curtain might be dropping on the side, okay? So now if we're looking out the window, of course this portion again would be sky and this would be water. So I can go back and put in that sky and water. Now it could be all done at the same time, of course would be easier if I did the sky all at once, but I wanted to show you which way the painting was going. Now. So many things you could do with a painting like this because you can put a, a candle in the window. It's very, very simple. Um, very easy to go onto the, um, onto the web and, and look up coloring book pages. And you can print out a coloring book page um, of candles or curtains and you can transfer a pattern right on if you'd like to go uh, that way in doing it. But today I'm just doing it very simply. So what I'd like to do is I'm gonna come in with the red and I put a little black on my brush. I may even put a little bit of blue. And I wanna come in and just put a little bit 
of what could be maybe a shadow, maybe a fold. And I'm just going to rub those in a little, just to make that look maybe a, like it's folding a little. So the curtain would be coming straight down and maybe coming a little bit to the side. Maybe it's tied off to the side. Okay, we can go back to this. Just want to show you which way the painting is going, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to my original blue and I want to put in the rest of this guy and I'll have to go in with the other brush. So it would have been easier, of course, if you, when you do it, do it all at once, okay? For the sake of time, I wanted to make sure that I could at least get this portion on to show you which way we're going with the painting, okay? So I'm just gonna come in and put my blue, I'll go back on with my, my smaller brush and I'll paint over. Just wanna get my blue on right now and then I will neaten that up a bit, okay? And same thing, down here was lighter. I'll come in there with the lighter. So this way you can see which way this painting is going. And then, so I'm switching back and forth just between the flat brushes and the, um, the larger scenery brush, okay? So here would be my water. So again, now I will come back and forth and I'll come up here and Go along the side of the curtain here. Now, like I said, I want to make sure I leave myself a couple minutes to show you the window pane. So I just am not going to fuss with this too much. You've got to see this corner, and that's how you would do this painting, okay? The way I did that corner, and then you would put the stars on. But at least the um, procedure of how to do it is there. I'll work on this a couple more minutes, and then I'd like to show you that window pane, okay? So, I just want to take the mop brush and smooth that out a little. And you can see how nice that curtain looks. Like I said, when you're at home doing it, you'll be much neater than I am right now, okay? And we can always get some more stars in the sky there. I just want to come back in here and fill this in a little bit for you. And then I'd like to show you how nice it looks once we get that window pane on there. All righty, there we go. So I'm going to quickly get the um, bottom of that water on there. And I'm not going to worry about matching that color right now because I could see I just have a couple minutes left. All right, so for now, I'm just going back and forth between my colors just to get that on there for you. Then last, I'll show you that nice window pane. Now, if I was going to be doing this and had more time, I would put a tree coming in the side. So let's see after I get this paint on real fast, if I can manage to get a little bit more in for this lesson. But there was a lot that you learned in this lesson, um, especially uh, beginners, because you'll see how easy it is to use tape in your projects. Okay, so I realize this color is not exactly the same from sky and around, all right? And when you do it, you'll work better, slower, <laughs> and a little more accurate to the colors. I'll try to pull some of this over. This way it evens out a little, and I can pull some of this over, okay? So what I would do normally is come in and put a, put a tree branch in there. I'm not going to put that tree branch in today because I really want to show you those window panes, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to peel off this tape. Okay, now that I have the tape off, I'm going to show you how to do a floating method. And this is a lot of fun, and it's uh, very effective for the window sills. Now, I have, let's see if I have another brush. First, I have to wash out my brush. So real quickly, I will show you um, my brush cleaning system. The brush cleaning system is a bucket uh, with a turn latch top and a screen inside. Okay, so 
the screen is up high, so the sediment, after you wash your brush, the sediment will drop down so you can use the same cleaner for an extended period of time. So how I clean my brush is I just dip and wipe and dip and wipe and I get some of that color off and then I just swish it around and I should be swishing neater and not uh, spilling it. <laughs> All right, there we go. So now my brush is pretty clean, okay? And I can wipe off that. Now, to float in the window panes, this is fun. This is a clear gel medium. You can use linseed oil, any other clear medium. I loaded the brush, a big flat brush, and I'm going to come along the side of the yellow ochre. Now, I just came along the side, and I'm pushing hard. I'm getting it into the brush, OK? Now, what I'm going to do to make this uh, white window pane stand out is, oh, see, I have a little blue in there still. There we go. I am just coming straight down with that yellow ochre along the side, and I'm going to come back up again. Now, I'm using that same side, OK? So the, the floating, the, um, sorry, the clear glazing medium is on the right, see? And there is the window pane starting to have a shadow in it. Now I'm picking up some of that blue and that's okay. Like I said, when you're at home and you're doing this, you could take your time and then I may spread that out a little and I'm going right up to that blue, all right? And that's how we get our window pane look. So what I would do is I would come across, across the whole window and along each side. Now that will take you a little bit of time and you won't go as fast as I'm going. And you'll do both sides of the windowsill. To finish up, I'm going to continue to paint in my window pane. And again, back into the medium and this is called side loading, side loading the brush. There we go. So I'd like to thank you for tuning in today and I hope that you'll try this at home. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to contact me. You can write to me um, either on Facebook at Lucy's Big Beautiful World of Painting or you can come onto my site. I have a contact form there which is lucysworldofpainting.com. Uh, so I hope to hear from you. I hope you'll send me some pictures. And uh, if you follow these little procedures today, you'll make a beautiful painting. And you'll see, you'll have your own ideas of what you can add. So thanks for tuning in, and I hope you'll come back and see more of my shows.